Hi guys, I'm Dan Isaac and this is my compact home shooting gallery in my terraced house cellar. Most of the targets and systems are homemade and in this video I just thought I'd show you guys a closer look at how some of the stuff was made and how it works. Let's go and take a closer look. Okay, this is the um, enclosed part of the gallery there. We've just got like um, a lino floor for it so you can sweep up the debris easy. And then we're going in. Got like one of the strobe lights for the effect. And then the um, the catchment tray and a bit of carpet there just to stop the impacts holding the lino. You got um, just curtains down the side. Um, so this is a shooting position, standing here or resting on this table, shooting down the 10 metre range. And then just above your head is the control panel. Firstly, we've got on and off to power up the range. This light indicates that the 24 volts is okay for the motors. And this light will light if there's a folk was setting up the bottles. This button brings on the knock out the lights target. If one or more is off and you just want to start that over again, you can just hit this one. This turns on the carousel and this is the speed control for the carousel and you can use this to balance the speed to the weight of the objects that you're shooting. This is the spider, the little disc that drops down from above. This turns on the ducks and this is the speed control for the ducks. This puts the bottles into automatic mode, so when the last bottle goes down, they will automatically reset. Or you can hit this button to reset them at any time. So if just one's down, you can reset them. If this is off, they will stay down until you choose to reset them manually. Right, this is just a side view from the outside of the um, gallery there. Um, we've got a Perspex or polycarbonate door there. So we can um, film through the sides without getting hit by shrapnel. And lower down is the steel door into the um, control box area. So we can open that with this little T-bar key. And then um, down to the bottom. Um, you've got this um, thick, 18mm thick plywood um, ramp for all the debris to slide down into the collection box. And underneath is the uh, main control box show you a shot inside that box it's all handmade there's no computer or anything it's all just relay logic and timers it's all built up out of that right the main construction of the um, gallery we got this steel frame that goes right round. On the front of the gallery we've got a nice bit of 8mm thick by 100mm angle wire in there and that gives a nice straight edge for the bottles to set up to at the back and there's also a nice hard wearing surface so if you're hitting and missing objects on and off the shelf there you're not going to do any damage to that because that's a nice hard bit of steel there. And then the back is some 6mm thick steel plates. Look down within there, you'll see that the steel plate stops just out of view there, and then you just got your ramp down to the catchment area underneath. Um, here's the uh, motor drive for the 10 green bottles, the arrestor bungee cord with a hose on it for them to land against. Right, the construction of the bottles is a 20 mil axle that's driven straight onto the motor drive there, right through to a pillow bearing at the other end. Then you've got the two reset arms which are pinched onto the axle with um, four grub screws. Um, each bottle is made out of 30 by six flat bar that's been filed into the bottle shapes. And they've been, all been made in an assembly jig so they're all exactly the same height and that while, while they were welded. Um, you've got a couple of washers each side to stop them binding with their neighbouring bottle and bringing it down. Um, this is a bit of 25mm pipe that's been finished on each end in the lathe. 
in under here you have magnetic sensors there's little little magnets set into the steel of the bottles there and the little pickups there and that's how it can tell when there's a bottle down you get the bell ringing all right just looking up and underneath there you can see all the um magnetic proximity sensors for the bottles and at the far end you've got the up limit switch right down to the last bottle there so as soon as the sensor sees it leave stop the delay and off they go So that can turn forwards and then because of the weight of the bottles, they're biased forwards. They, um, as the bar rotates backwards, they just stay there by gravity. So the arm can move back out of the way. Here's the um, interface for all the magnetic sensors and the limit switches. And then that feeds down through the tubes, down the side there, into the main control box. Um, we've just got some red LED strips there just to shine down and illuminate the um, exit. You can see the um, arms for the reset arm and then this little plunger just hits the upper limit switch to tell it when it's in its up position there. Um, the reset arm is made out of a 10 mil stud bar all the way through. There's a steel tube in there and then to finish it off, a, layer, um, a hose pipe layer. So to give it a little bit of cushion in there. And that's just bolted through on the other end as well. Um, we've got these elongated slots here and here and the same the other end up and underneath. Um, and that allows for the upright position of the bottles to be calibrated by sliding the axle in and out. And you can also um, rotate these reset arms on the bar so that um, the bar comes up evenly. So you can um, calibrate that also. Just a quick run through the main controls. We've got the um, 240 volt mains neon here. The 12 volt 5 amp PSU which pretty much runs everything apart from the 24 volt motors and the mains lights. The on LED, the bell and siren mute switches, should I need to mute them for testing or anything. The super skill shot delay, that's how long the alarm sounds and the strobe light flashes for hitting the skill shot. And the LED to show that the circuit's closed for that. The up and down speed controls for the bottles motor the upstroke and downstroke time limits, the pre-reset bell delay and the bell pulse delay. So that's the one that when you hit each bottle individually, it just rings the bell for a split second. You've got all the bottles inputs here. So when I knock one down, you'll see that one's just gone off there. This is the manual reset. the timed out reset and the auto reset disengage. And on the back here, we've got all the quick release terminal plugs for all the inputs and outputs. So I can unplug it and take it away for bench repair should anything need doing to it. Um, if something obstructs the bottles being set up, it will time out and give a fault alarm, which I've simulated now. There we go. It's taken too long to set the bottles up, so they stopped and brought on the fault light. You can clear the obstruction. Push the reset button and start over. Uh, and we're all back to normal. Right, uh, using the manual controls for the bottles, I can like bring them halfway up and then stop them and they can lie in this horizontal position for a quick touch up of paint. This is our extinguish all the lights target. This was first made back in 2003 as a standalone unit, but later became part of this gallery. It comprises of three targets, a 20 mil hoe, a 15 mil hoe, and a 10 mil hoe, 
and when you go through those holes you knock out each corresponding light and when they're all out an alarm sounds and all the lights come back on again i've got it on the bench here now um take a look at the side and you can see the the flaps there that get hit when you, when the pellets go through the hose and then you just got magnetic door contacts down there let's get it on its flap there magnetic door contacts just it just moves a little bit and breaks breaks the circuits for the relays then the timing relay that will, after they've all gone out will then cycle and then turn all the relays back on because there's a, a relay for each light it's just made of car relays i think it was this 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 metal bar is removable and behind there we just got three colored fairy light bulbs right the duct construction there all we've got for that is um, a 24 volt motor and that's obviously electronically controlled through a post switch modulator speed controller so we can control the speed nicely on them and you just got a pillow bearing to support the axle there and then the ducts are just hinged with these offset hinges with weights on so as they come round the weight just sets them up automatically and then we can adjust the tilt with this boat here these boats here just to tilt them so they just set up just nicely as they come into view like so Right, this is um, my most challenging shot it's um, the super skill shot it's similar to the knockout the lights target but now it's just a six millimeter hole in the middle and that's backlit with some led strips there you can just see the red light in the middle there when you're face on you'll see that brighter but the camera's off to an angle slightly um, this is just um, a steel box of an open top and bottom allowing the pellet debris to fall out and behind there is a fixed steel tongue that pushes on a micro switch and then that knocks out the white lights and activates the alarm and strobe lights for a few seconds and you can vary the time of that depending on how often you're hitting it. Um, the construction on the face there is um, two 10 mil thick steel rings totaling about 20 mil thick of steel there on the face so nice and hard. Right, um, we just whiten up the faces of these sort of targets with um, just correction fluid like that, um, so you can see where you're hitting. Just looking in the bottom of the skill shot there, you can see the steel trigger tongue and the LED lights on the opposite side. So what you see is the reflection of the light off of them, so they don't get hit directly by the air rifle pellets. And then you can see the little switch on the left that gets pushed by the tongue to activate the device. Just looking in on top of the skill shot there, you can see there's some little switches there. Must have changed the colour of the backlight. It can be red, green or blue. This is the exploding target. It's um, just a little plunger that just pushes on a cap. So yeah, I just unscrew this and behind there, it's just a little plunger. Just pushes on a little cap on a pin, makes a little bang there. Um, this is the cut the string target. It's just basically a string running across the steel plate, um, or, and then down there you got a steel weight on the bottom there. Right with the carousel um, spindle here, we can just clip on in different arrangements, either in in three chains or four chains, depending on which holes you use to space them out. And then we just got these um, steel hooks to hang their objects on, like cups and CDs. Um, like I said, with the controls, you can vary the speed of that spindle to just get the weight right so that your cups are just missing a wall there, see? Just, and it'll just stay like that. This is the, um, what I call the spider target, because it sort of drops down like a spider. Um, now that's just made out of, um, an old disco light motor see, and a pulley and it just goes through there winds it down winds it back up and it sort of behaves a bit randomly because it's one of them auto reversing motors when you sort of stall it like um, this is just a paper target holder but i've modified it um i've put a thicker steel deflector plate in the back and I've just opened out the bottom because I just want the pellets to just fall out the bottom and I could just sweep them off there.
this target and this target is um, both of just pre-manufactured targets. Um, just looking at some of the lighting there, see we've got some fluorescent tubes boxed in with polycarbonate roof sheet type stuff. And then in the ceiling another strip and some CLF lamps. And then over behind there, a couple of hundred watt tungsten lamps just to give a good mixture of light so you don't get so much strobing. And there's one of the strobe lights that triggers with the skill shot. All right, we just got an optional spotlight that I can just turn on and off there, um, and that just shines on the um, paper target. Um, you can just make out in this ceiling area there is a, um, a couple of there's a power supply up there and the two motor speed controls for the for the cup carousel, and the other speed control is for the ducks down there.
please check out my other videos to see the gallery in action, links are in the description. Please tell me what you thought about this video in the comments or if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video a like would mean a lot. Cheers for now guys.